animating masks in Final Cut Pro is a piece of cake when you've got keyframes on your side. So let's dive into this step-by-step -step journey. Picture this, we're gonna put this eye in this soccer ball. First things first, drag the football clip onto the timeline and add the eye clip above it. Now let's make sure they're in sync. Let's turn on the snapping by pressing the keyboard shortcut N. Now let's drag the playhead and align it to the football clip. Then press Option Right Bracket to trim the eye clip. Next stop, the Effects menu. If it's playing hide and seek, no worries. You can spot it by clicking on the icon with two rectangles or by giving a quick Command 5 on your keyboard. In the Masks and Keying category, grab the Shape Mask and plop it onto your eye clip. Time to meet the inspector. If it's camera shy, coax it out by clicking the icon with three sliders or simply by pressing Command 4. Now, for the artsy part, in the viewer, shape that mask into a circle to match the soccer ball. Tweak the curvature by pulling the white handle and resizing it with the green handles. Now, it's time to adjust the eye's size to match the soccer ball. Simply right-click on the viewer and choose Transform. Use those handy blue corner handles to make it smaller, and then position it over the soccer ball. Once it looks just right, go ahead and click Done. Now go back to the inspector and select Convert to Control Points. Just say Yes to the pop-up warning by clicking Convert. Set the playhead where the animation begins and make any necessary tweaks in the viewer. Ready to add some pizzazz? It's keyframe time. Now, let's dig into the draw mask effect in the inspector. Expand the transforms and control points sections. Hover your cursor over the position section and give that keyframe diamond a friendly click making it turn a cheerful shade of yellow. Let's go ahead and add keyframes for scale and all the control points. But we're not done yet. Head over to Transform at the bottom of the Opacity section and click on the keyframe diamond for position to add even more keyframes to the mix. It's like adding sprinkles to your animation. Before we continue, how about spreading some positivity by hitting that thumbs up button? Not only does it tell me if I'm doing a great job at explaining things, but it also helps others find this video. Thanks a bunch. Now right-click the viewer and select Transform. Now, let's head over to the timeline and casually stroll one frame ahead by tapping that right arrow key. Keep your eyes peeled for the moment when the football switches things up. As you spot the football's new position, go ahead and adjust that eye clip in the viewer to follow along. When you're ready to move on, nudge one frame forward again on the timeline and adjust that eye clip in the viewer to if the eye isn't quite in the frame, don't stress, just hit Done. Now back to the draw mask. Give that left arrow next to percent sign a gentle click so we're back at our starting point. Shift one frame to the right on the timeline by pressing the right arrow. And now it's time for some fine tuning. Adjust those control points on the viewer to match up with the fresh eye shape frame by frame. Easy, right? Keep an eye on those filled yellow diamonds in the inspector. They're your auto-generated keyframes. Keep the playhead party going, making adjustments as you go until your animated mask is ready to shine. And voila, your masterpiece is complete. In a nutshell, keyframing control points for masks elevates your animations. Now that you're a mask maestro, why not venture into the world of animating titles? Discover how to whip up 3D titles and motion graphics in just two steps. Click here and dive in.